Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll talk about one more example of chlorophyta or green algae, that is Spirogyra. Spirogyra is a filamentous unbranched alga. Filamentous and unbranched. It is normally found in fresh stagnant water and it is also known as pond scum or pond silk. Pond silk. And the, <coughs> sorry, and the reason is that its outer layer becomes mucilaginous. Once we know the composition of that layer, we'll understand why this slimy nature is seen. So it is filamentous and <coughs> the, filament does, the filament does not show any kind of branching. When the spirogyra filament is young, it normally remains attached to a substratum. So when it is attached to a substratum, it is pretty much like eulothrix. The lowermost cell which is non-green and is called the hold fast. Then the other cells, they are elongated cells except for the cell which is at the top and the top cell is dome shaped. This is seen in case of a young filament. Once it matures, it detaches from the substratum and it becomes a free-floating one. And when it is free-floating, then it is carried by the water current. So if we see the structure of a single cell, then we would find that the length of the cell is more than its width. So these are the cells and this is the one which we will be drawing in detail. The outermost layer is cell wall and this cell wall is made up of two layers the inner which is made up of cellulose and the outer which is made up of pectose and it is this pectose which dissolves in water and becomes mucilage so now when it becomes mucilaginous, the outer surface appears very slimy and that's why it is known as pond silk. And because of all this mucilage, all these filaments, they form the scum and that's why it is known as pond scum. So now when we talk about the cell, a single cell, the outermost layer is the cell wall and the inner is protoplast. Protoplast means plasma membrane and the other things which are inside. So, there is this plasma membrane and inside this plasma membrane is present the cytoplasm and a centrally placed large vacuole which is a very special feature of spirogyra. So, the peripheral thing is the cytoplasmic content. It is a typical eukaryotic cell. So, every organelle is in this peripheral cytoplasm. We are not going to draw all those structures and there is this large centrally placed vacuole. So if we draw this vacuole, we will have to show the membrane of this vacuole and this membrane is known as tonoplast. So there is a large centrally placed vacuole because of which the entire cytoplasmic content becomes peripheral. And now there is a term which is given to this. So what exactly we are talking about? We are talking about peripheral cytoplasm and centrally placed vacuole. This structure is known as primordial utricle. This is a very very important thing. 
So primordial utricle is nothing but peripheral cytoplasm and there is a centrally placed vacuum. Now where is the nucleus? The nucleus is in the center of the vacuum and it is suspended by cytoplasmic strands. So there are cytoplasmic strands which are going to hold this nucleus and this nucleus will remain suspended in the center of the vacuum. So this is the nucleus and these strand like structures which we have drawn these are cytoplasmic strands. Cytoplasmic strands. So in the, in the center of the vacuole, this nucleus is suspended. It is a green alga, so it has to have those green pigments and accessory pigments and they are present in chloroplast. Chloroplast, in case of spirogyra, they are ribbon-like and are spirally arranged. So we are drawing this spirally arranged. Say this one goes behind the vacuole and this one is going above it. And this is again like this. So the, this is the chloroplast here. And it is ribbon like spirally coil. And we have also seen that on the chloroplast are present pyrimides. So let us erase these things which are on it. And let us draw a few pyramids. Pyramid is nothing but the same thing which is going to have a central core of protein surrounded by the starch grains. So this is nothing but those pyrenoids. and if you are able to recall pyrenoids are the reserve food material central core is of protein and it is surrounded by starch grains. So these are starch grains and the core is of protein and the structure is known as pyrimide. So there are many chloroplasts and embedded in these chloroplasts uh, are present many pyrimides. So let us label this structure. The green one here is chloroplast and there are many many pyrimides. So this is the reserve food material for the alga. So structure wise it is simple few things which we have to remember and which which are very unique to spirogyra are the primordial utricle and this is the centrally large vacuole a centrally placed large vacuole and peripheral cytoplasm one important thing second the nucleus is suspended inside the vacuum with the help of cytoplasmic strand. Third, there are many ribbon-like chloroplasts which are spirally arranged and in which there are many pyrenoids which are embedded. Common structures are like any eukaryotic cell. The cell wall has two layers. Uh, the inner is cellulose, outer is pectose because of which the mucilaginous layer is formed and that is why these two names that is pond scum and pond silk. There are about 300 varieties or species of spirogyra which are known. 300 species are there. And now when we talk about the reproduction part, the reproductive processes There are three main methods which are uh, discussed here. One is vegetative reproduction. Vegetative reproduction takes place by fragmentation. Whenever the filament breaks into parts and each fragment gives rise to a new filament. So that is fragmentation. Now next method that we normally talk of is asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is not common in spirogyra. Not common. It has been reported only in 9 out of 300 species. Reported in 9 out of 300 species. And that too 
it takes place by a planospore formation or a kinet formation that means there are some thick wall structures formed as asexual reproduction and once that unfavorable condition is gone those thick wall structures would give rise to the new phylum. The most common method of reproduction which is seen in case of spirogyra is sexual reproduction and that takes place by conjugation. Now conjugation is also of two types which we will discuss uh, in the next part but during conjugation the two filaments or the two cells of the same filament would conjugate and gamete formation fusion will take place resulting in the formation of zygote. So that method that process will take up in the next part but the structure that we normally talk of is like this many chloroplasts and the cell shape is also very important. Lengthwise, it is more than the width. If you are able to uh, recall Eulothrix, in Eulothrix we said that each cell is more in width and less in height. It is just opposite of that. It is more in height and less in width. So structurally, there are important things which we have to remember and the most important is this primordial utricle. Now in the next part, we'll take up the detailed method of conjugation which is seen in case of spiral.